Greetings everyone, the good Sir Knight here, and today we are going to be discussing grenade launchers. Now, this is sort of just a quick little, uh, I guess we'll call it a class about grenade launchers for those who are kind of interested in looking at them and all that stuff. So grenade launchers, basically they just fire a grenade. Really the most important concept is the grenade itself. As long as you have the grenade, you can basically just thumb it. So your first grenade launcher, you already have, even if you don't own the grenade, your grenade launcher it is going to be your finger. So with this option, basically the no grenade launcher option where you just have the grenade, you just aim the grenade freely with whatever other hand. You got to press with the same thumb or you can use a separate hand. Now the thumb, it can be a little rough, the, depending on how much gas is in there to actually push the button. So one hand could cause a delay in the actual firing. Using your second hand will obviously take up two hands, which is the problem there. Now the grenades come in different types. This is the shower shell palm grenade. It has individual chambers. It holds a total of 120 BBs. This one's made by Mag, made out of palm, so a very lightweight, friction, non, low friction uh, polymer. And it's nice because the reduced weight means that it's easier to carry. Although the loading time is a pain, so that sucks. Secondly, there's the multi-purpose type, which is on order and not yet here, which is basically a solid hole in the center. You gas it from behind, you throw whatever BBs, marking powder, or whatever you need to in there, you throw a cap on it, and it's ready to fire. Far easier to load, although supposedly less accurate. Additionally, there are rocket and projectile types, such as this one. This one fires a single black cap, 40 millimeter, which flies and can either hit your target or anything. Depending on the field rules, said cap can disable a vehicle, or if fired into a bunker or a room, theoretically clear out the entire room. Depending on the field and the judges. Otherwise, it could just bounce around and people are like, oh, well, okay, that's cool, I guess. That's your main grenade types, and your main fire is the finger. Now, as far as the actual grenade launchers go, which can range from price drastically, I think the cheapest one we're going to be going over is about 50 bucks, and the more expensive is going to be closer to, like, what, 230 on sale on a good day, plus shipping, which brought up to, like, 270 Anyway, look over the grenade launchers. Let's start with the basic. The two types you're going to have is either attached to your primary weapon or as a separate standalone device. Now the first one I purchased, we'll cover, has been modified a bit. It is the S Thunder, which I think was bought by SEMA, is now called like the 6mm Pro Shop. Grenade launch. This one's metal and comes with a rail. So this one is very simple. Since it's separate, you're not adding any extra weight to your primary weapon. Which means that you can still aim your primary just as fast and everything and quick and be like, oh, okay, cool, yeah. When you need a grenade, this one can be preferably leg mounted or mount it onto your plate carrier, actually just thrown in a dump pouch, or anywhere you really need to. It's small hand cannon sized, alone it weighs nothing, but once you install a grenade, like so, loads in, it adds a lot of weight to the front, which makes sense. There's practically nothing on the rear, it's just a pistol grip. Now the benefit here is that it's quick to aim, very speedy, you can poke it around corners, and being trigger fired, it is incredibly easy to use. It's gonna fire practically instantly. So come up around the corner, you need to peek it, you can sling you can keep your rifle slung, you can pull out your hand cannon, and you can go and in the event someone comes up, you still got a handgun. So very easy to use, and you can throw this back in. Shell ejection's easy. You can see there, load a new shell, eject. Very easy. Simple to use, and this one was only about $70 at the time I purchased it, so. Fantastic, this one is actually painted to glow in the dark because you need to balance your realism with having fun with Airsoft. And if you're not having fun, then why play? I mean, seriously. So, awesome, grenade, little hand cannon. Fantastic, works well with just about everything, and you can do all sorts of fun stuff with it. And being handgun sized, it's a. Uh, well, you get the idea. It's fun, lightweight, out of the way, it gives you the ability to use grenades without taking up a ton of space or causing other problems. Now, as far as standalone goes, continuing on, as from one of the more recent videos you may have seen, we have the M79 uh, Thumper, Can Cannon, the uh, Thump Gun, the Bloop Tube, whatever you want to call it, it has a lot of names. Prominent from Vietnam, we actually have a web sling on here, for added aesthetics. Now this gun, the problem with it is that it pretty much desires to be a primary weapon, so I've got a nice tactical tailor belt here that can hold 12 grenades, of which I have four seated on it, so eight shy. But if you're going to use this, it practically has to be a primary. It's small M4 size, however, again, it's doing the same thing the hand cannon does, albeit with 
significantly more sex appeal and added aesthetics and added price. So you got a little leaf sight and everything, which isn't going to do anything IRL. Well, IRL does a lot. In the airsoft game, it does practically nothing because you're still just going to point it and go bloop. Now, it does have a two-point sling. They do also make a sawed-off version, so that's a bit wider, closer to the, the uh, hand cannon we have here, but uh, a bit extra weight, a few more extra things that you don't necessarily need for a grenade launcher. So, with their little M79 here, you've got a little buttstock. So, it's abs aesthetically, it's just joy is the only way to put it. This thing just makes you happy, it makes you smile, and it's entirely impractical because as far as using grenades you're going to be just firing a huge shower of grenades and unless you have a multiple shot grenade launcher which again the shells cost about 50 bucks a pop so it's going to get really pricey really fast and it's going to be quite a bit so this one is a fun breech loading and everything so that's cool you can load your grenade but once you pop a cord and you go poof it's, yeah it's satisfying it looks really really cool but with this being your primary, if someone is going to run up on you after hearing bang, then this is... You better have a nice handgun, is what it's going to come down to. But you can run this as a primary. It is doable. You're going to want at least 12 shells in a relatively small field, and you're probably not going to get far without backup suppressing bunkers so you can run around the corner. So, fun, but there's a reason in Vietnam they're issued either this or an M16, or a grease gun, is because this is just absurd. now. I have been trying to find a way to sling this, but it doesn't like to stay slung with a plate carrier and everything in the way. Its tendency is twofold. With slings, you generally want to keep an extra hand on it, which ruins the point of keeping it slung if you want to use a primer weapon. So, key problem is A, both sides tend to be heavy, so the first problem is it's going to basically slide until it's like this, because that's what it is want to do. Secondly, the sling doesn't like staying on your plate carrier, so even if you do clamp it down with a... Uh, Slung weapon catch, the sling will like to fall off over here. Then when that's there, you can't move your arm freely, and then this starts to fall, and you got all sorts of problems. So, although aesthetically pleasing, you're looking at primarily a uh, primary weapon here. Now, if there is a way, if somewhere in the near future I have some massive revelation of how to carry this and still use a primary weapon and still sufficiently go between the two, great. Though unlikely. So most likely, if you're using something like this as a primary, you're going to want tag rounds or pretty much rockets, things you're going to get some distance on and preferably at a field that if you fire a rocket into a bunker and the ref sees it, then never mind the bunker is dead. At which point, go buy 12 rockets and just hang out in the back and be like, oh, that guy, we can't flank him? Okay, cool. And yeah, so that would be cool. So that's the other type, and that's the end basically for the standalones. Now the last type, where I'm actually kind of still debating on is the 203. Now, as you might remember, I bought this 203 not all that long ago. And the key problem here, that you can see, is it does add a lot of weight. Not just weight to the gun, the weight's not the problem, as you can see. The problem is that it's not balanced. The weight sits far forward, especially if you pop this open and you throw a grenade in there. Now, this makes the gun very front heavy and puts a lot of stress on your grip and everything. So, to use this, you're adding a lot of weight it's going to slow off, it's going to throw off your aim a bit because now when you pull it one way at a quickness, you have to stop it again. Momentum, object in motion wants to stay in motion, etc., etc. But this, I think, might honestly be the way to go. So with the 203, you can now engage a target, pop, 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 keep rounds on them while they're suppressed, move your hands to the free side. As soon as you come around the corner, boom, pop them. No need for additional support, so it makes a far more useful individual weapon. And of course, when you're out, just dump out the shell, grab a new shell, load again. As you can see, that can be done relatively quickly. And all the while, you can still be putting rounds downrange. You can be like pop, 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 chicken wing, pop, 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 pop that back open, load a new shell. Okay. So, that's cool. I'm just littering my floor with shells right now because that's the cool thing to do. And we've still got an extra shell, so. That's fun. The grenade belt does kind of make a dump pouch nay impossible, so keep that in mind with a grenade launcher. So you can still run a handgun, so if that's all going on and run out of mags or whatever nonsense, I can still handgun up, which is fantastic for close range and all that. You get the idea. So, floor is littered. So that's the grenade launcher. Although without a grenade, it is a bit lighter, though the lower 
one in the arm is going to throw off your accuracy. You still need to switch between the two. You can you have a wide variety of places to grip the weapon at, depending on your personal preference. And if you do get the quick release with the Matrix here, you can pop that off in a moment's notice and go to a normal light handgun, especially if you're out of grenades or you need to do something absolutely crazy and then 203 has to be ditched. So, options. Options are fantastic. So, that's practically the main three. I think the 203 might be the way to go, not just because you can put fun stickers on it, but also because it gives you the most amount of firepower. With no need to transition, and you can just throw out all good grenades and boom. So, cool. So, I think that's going to be the way to go. I do know my good buddy Tesla Gojira was really getting me into 203s. I used to just run the hand cannon with a uh, Scorpion VZ61, which worked out pretty well in a very run and gun sort of way although reloading was a pain. And the, I guess the main thing here is you got your weapon attached. It does add a bit of weight and everything, but if you work out properly and build stamina, occasionally load a grenade in there, like so. In my favorite pastime, just stand there like this for about 10 minutes and your arm's gonna get tired. But it'll build up that endurance so you can do it in game, although using braces and support, or even just the sling here, you can throw that on and tighten that up so it holds the weapon a bit more comfortably so you can do it longer and keep that overwatch. So, yeah, there's a few options for you. And yeah, so, basically your choices are between an out of the way weapon that's lightweight and can be hand cannoned, although it does need something to be kept in. So a magazine pouch, double stack mag pouch, dump pouch or something like. So you have the uh, M79, which is a massive amount of happiness and sex appeal at the cost of practi all practicality. There's no practical way to field that and still carry a rifle or anything, so... Those are two options, and then the 203. Or also the M320 I heard is really cool, because the tube flips to the side and it's got a little built-in pistol grip. Do you need a pistol grip? Eh, not really. You don't really need a broomstick or anything. I mean, it's fine. It really depends on how high speed of a shooter you want to be. But yeah, I think I like the normal grip personally. This is great for me. I hell, I got iron sights. Had bad luck my last game with uh, optics, so iron sights seem to work out best. And it's within 50 meters, it's mostly feel anyway. So yeah, and grenade launcher. So I'll probably be running the M203 on the next game. We'll do the shotgun on a few games after that. We'll see what happens. The shotgun mostly needs a 42 inch shotgun bag. So meters on other than this reduces to under 36 inches. I think this one's close to like 34. So. Size-wise, it's great. Damn, that gets hefty quick with the grenade launcher. So, things to keep in mind. Although, I guess you can always minimize the stock and just run around Rambo-style everything. Just bah, 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 Scarface. Scarface is the movie I'm thinking of. So, don't do that. Stop that right now. So, that's everything we got for you guys. And that's basically our quick class on grenade launchers. We'll actually cover the grenades when the uh, Matrix grenades get here. We'll fire off a few of those. Mostly for the hell of it, and we'll have a great time. So, I guess the only problem you'd have with the 203, other than the forward weight and everything, is that you're also going to need a decent weapon to mount it on. Obviously, SR-16, which is very M4 based, works just fine. They do make smaller grenade launchers and longer grenade launchers, if you so desire. So, options everyone, options. So, don't be a goober and don't spend all your money. Buy the ones you need, and really, sit down and think about it. Because, I mean, if you get the 203 for 50 bucks is a good price, considering you still need to buy the grenades. The hand cannon is probably your second best option, so you don't throw extra weight on your primary. And the M79 is if you're just bawling out of control, and you just can't get rid of your money fast enough. And you just really want to look cool while being utterly impractical and, nay, useless on the field. But if you do get a kill, it's going to justify all the money you spend going. So, that's all I got for you guys. Cheers everyone, hope this video kind of give you an idea about grenade launchers. I mean, in the end of the day, they're all going to be mostly impractical. But if you have to have a grenade launcher, and you just really like having that extra firepower for when uh, it hits the fan, or the fat's in the fire, then that's what you got. So, cheers everyone. If you got any questions, I'll do my best to answer those. But yeah, that's basically your our quick little rundown on grenade launchers. So, cheers everyone. See you in the next video.